So talking about the concept of pericardial window, um, pericardial window is more of like, let me say you have pericardial effusion. So this pericardial effusion is now what? Going to cardiac tamponage. Do you understand? Like there's compression of the heart, everything is becoming abnormal and all that. And you want to like relieve the patient. So we spoke about pericardiosynthesis, where you're actually putting a needle into this, uh, that sac, the pericardium surrounding the heart, where there's accumulation of fluid now. You are putting a needle there to now what? Aspirate some of the fluid, all right? But there's another concept of pericardial window. This one, you're just trying to make an opening so that this excess fluid that is around the heart, causing a compression on the heart, the fluid we now have what? Space to now come out. I don't know if you understand. Like the fluid you now have a space to escape so that the heart can be relieved, all right? Because normally fluid is not supposed to accumulate around the heart. If there's accumulation of fluid around the heart, it will basically lead to what? Compression of the heart. The heart will not be able to relax the way it wants. Relax, that's the diastole, the contract, okay? So we'll be talking about this concept from the definition. That's, it's a surgical procedure, right? It's a surgery that is done on the heart. Concept of what? Pericardial window. We are trying to open to allow the fluid to drain out, okay? It looks simple like that, but it's not a simple thing, all right? Something worth studying. So we talk about the definition, the indications, when to do a pericardial window. They talk about the procedure, then the types of pericardial windows that we have, then complications, right? Then benefits, the post-procedure care, that's after the operation, things that you need to do to the patients and all that, right? So the pericardial window, just like the way I've spent my time to explain, is a surgical procedure that involves creating an opening in the pericardium, all right? So this pericardium surrounding the heart, you are now creating an opening, okay? Where the fluid, where there's accumulation of fluid now. You are doing this in cases where there's what pericardial effusion. So as the fluid is surrounding the heart, is compressing the heart, you are now making an opening so that the fluid can actually drain out, okay? Now, you are making this incision to drain out fluid or blood. If it is fluid, it's what? Hydrothorax. If it is blood, it's what? hemothorax, okay, that is accumulated in the pericardial space, then indications when to do this type of surgery. If a patient has cardiac tamponade, which is a life-threatening compression of the heart, and cardiac tamponade usually uh, um, results from accumulation of fluid or blood around the heart, so it's compressing the heart, right, so you might want to do a pericardial window for that. Then if the patient has a reoccurring pericardial effusion, like they have a pericardial effusion that as you are treating, it is coming back. As you treat them, it will come back, all right? You have to now do this type of what? Surgery to relieve that. If a patient has what? Pericarditis. You know, inflammations can lead to formation of pus. So there could be pus around the heart. That's crazy, right? It could be due to some trauma or injury to the heart or pericardium, right? The procedure, how can you be able to do this? How can you be able to do the surgery? This is just a light procedure, all right? If you want to know the real procedures to this when you are doing your postgraduate, okay? So you do a thoracotomy, that's you open the chest. So it's either you are opening the chest, that's open surgery, or it could be that you are just doing minimal invasive approach. We probably use a thoracoscope, okay? Then you incise into the pericardium to create the window. You drain the fluid or blood. Then you could do the biopsy of the pericardial tissue, all right? And probably send for histology, all right? Then after you're done, you close the pericardial window, all right? So this is uh, the pericardial effusion I was talking about, all right? Where you could see there's a healthy heart. Then you could see there's a heart where you have an excess fluid around it, all right? Like little compression, all right? which is not nice for business, right? Then types of pericardial windows, you have the word subzephoid pericardial window. You know, the sternum is here. So beneath the sternum is the zephoid. So you approach the heart through the zephoid, right? So you make an incision under the xiphoid process of the sternum. So you approach the heart through that side, right? Then you have the thoracoscopic or pericardial window, which this one is what? Minimal invasive, right? 
anything minimal and invasive, you are not really cutting too much, right? So you're just using a scope for that. Then pericardial fenestration. This one is creating multiple openings, right? Which is uh the complications, of course. A surgery is a surgery, right? Every surgery leads towards possibilities of bleeding or hemorrhage. Then there could be possibilities of an infection, right? Like you don't treat the wounds after the surgery well, including infections, heart injuries, adhesions or scarring, the reoccurrence of the pericardial effusion. It could be that the pericardial effusion that you are trying to treat, every time you do and go, it will relieve for a while. They still come back, all right? So problems like that. The benefits, of course, there's fluid accumulation around the heart, so the patient is not comfortable and all that. So when you do this type of surgery to drain out the fluid, you are relieving the patient of their problem, right? So it's really to relieve of cardiac tamponade. There's effective drainage of the pericardial fluid. There's reduced risk of all complications. There's improved cardiac function and there's enhanced patient outcomes, right? Then post-procedural care. Like after doing this surgery, there are some follow-ups that you should do for the patient, right? You don't allow the patients like that. You always follow up your patients, right? You can be monitoring them for complications. You can be doing pain management. You can be doing fluid management. You can be doing follow-up imaging studies. They could be doing wound care and dressing changes, right? All of this could be indicated in that, right? So I think that's it for pericardial window. We spoke about it from the definitions and indications. Uh, procedures, types, complications, benefits, and everything, all right? So that's it, guys.